I had a request quite a long time ago uh, to tell something about frequency dependent backcoupling. Approximately uh, six months ago or so. And that's why I make this video to show some basics of that issue. Um, here I've made a very classical emitter follower um, two stage transistor amplifier and the good thing of it all is that we can set the working point here the bias biasing and we can set here the amplification factor and the whole thing is this this is an amplifier we send in here an audio signal. We take the audio signal out here and then send it via a capacitor of a certain value back to the input. And that's here. So there are three locations to which you can connect that backcoupling capacitor. And this is the general theory. This is the amplifier. And we uh, take the signal out at the output, send it back to the input, and use a capacitor for that. And the good thing of a capacitor is the, the typical property uh, is that it is frequency dependent. So this is the formula for that. And that means that um, when we use here a certain capacitor, the whole circuit, the amplifier, gets frequency dependent and amplifies certain frequencies in the audio band in a better way compared to other parts of the audio band. And that audio band is, say, between 20 Hz and 20 kilohertz. And I've made a uh, demonstration circuit here with a few capacitors. Non-polar, of course, always non-polar in such an application. And here is a two-stage transistor amplifier. We can set the working point here and here from both transistor stages and we can set the amplification here and here with the uh, variable resistors, potentiometers at the both, both of the emitters. Input is uh, a telephone, an iPhone, a CD player and I've used by purpose here two 1K resistors, it forms a voltage divider and it also safeguards the output of your iPhone or CD player. It's a low impedance output, so the uh, headphone output of your uh, telephone or the say the AUX output of the CD player. And here are the back coupling capacitors that I've, uh, I've chosen. 1N5, 1500 picofarad, 100 nanofarad, 1 microfarad. And here there is a situation where we can slowly add, via the 10K resistor, the effect of the capacitor. And I want to demonstrate that. So, uh, Put on the scope. This is the music at the moment. Want to give the link to the music. This is the situation now. Um, there is the output here. That's here in the circuit. And this is the the crocodile clip and now we connect a 15 nano 
sorry, a 1.5 nanofarad gap. Between the output and the input, perhaps you can hear the difference. I cannot hear it so very, very good anyway. But when we do the same with a 100 nanofarad gap, you will surely hear the difference. Back coupling the output to the input. The sound is a little bit dull now. And when we uh, back couple the signal with a one microfarad cap, it even gets more dull. So here's the difference. And you can hear that the filter gives loss, energy loss. That's normal. Filtering the here we have the music again. And now the next demonstration is here. I've now uh, made connected this circuit here, 10k potentiometer, one microfarad capacitor. And let's see what happens when we turn that potentiometer. Turn it back and forward. So there's a substantial effect of that potentiometer when you turn it. And now a demonstration of this part of the circuit. I connect now the one microfarad capacitor from the output here to ground. This is the ground wire. You can see it here. One microfarad to ground. You can also hear a difference. The sound loses somewhat in the middle audio band. Okay, well, uh, it's possible to connect the output here to different locations in the amplifier. And I want to demonstrate that now. I take the one microfarad capacitor, this one, one microfarad and then hook it up to A, to B or to C. Uh, it's important to tell that when the phase is not correct the thing will start to oscillate. That also depends on the working point and the amplification and you can set that here individually for both transistors. So on a certain, uh, in a certain uh, working point biasing the transistor amplifies, but when you change that biasing, uh, it doesn't amplify so much. But there is always an ideal working point here, so that's important. And now the uh, amplifier was set to its ideal working point. Anyway, let's see what happens. Connect now it to the one microfarad cap. And you can see now that it is connected here to the emitter. What happens when we connect it to the, the back coupling capacitor to the base? So you've made an oscillator in that case and that uh, 
is only one effect, you can change that by changing the working point. So now the working point is changed, but that's not ideal. Of course, we always want that um, a transistor has is set to the normal biasing. And that means that it amplifies, of course, when it is used as an audio amplifier. So this is the normal here, the normal, you can see here, you can hear here, that's important perhaps, the effect of changing the working point. of amplifying with the, with the emitter uh, resistor. That emitter resistor here is also a frequency dependent unit. This amplifies especially for audio very well. 10 microfarad with that 1k potentiometer and there are more videos on my YouTube channel. So let's see what happens when we change the back coupling from the emitter to another point and that's here. C and after that I will do that for A to C It also has an effect on the frequency band. Let's see what happens when we uh, uh, bring down the frequency band with that other uh, capacitor to ground. Another completely other sound profile. Um, so it could be an interesting sound profile with much bass, etc. Well, I take it up again. Uh, we now take the 100 nanofarad cap. the amplification amplification of the second stage back coupling cap is now 100 nanofarad now the amplification of the first stage and these demos in these demo demos, this was the point to which the backup link capacitor was connected. I only have one minute on my um, camera. When you want to know more, buy my book, Schematics 2, Audio Amplifiers and Loudspeaker Boxes. Uh, much circuits are there, filter circuits, uh, parallel T filter, etc. etc. And um, there's much more and more specific information about audio filters and um, the use of audio filters. So this was more or less all to tell. Hope you enjoyed it.